So yeah, um, hello everybody. My name is Andrew Solari. I'm the treasurer of the Reading Union. And if you don't know who I am, um, I am also the producer and character technical director for Savvy, which is directed by Jess over here. Yeah, she was here earlier in the corner and she did um, a lecture on retopology. So I'm gonna try to reach her level of explanation. Uh, so yeah, right now I'm just gonna go ahead and show you uh, the rig that we're working with for Stabby. Uh, it's pretty much final for the body except for skin rating, skin weighting. Uh, we do have to do facial rigging, but as of right now, this is definitely enough for layout, which we're about to get into. So the goal with the Stabby rig is to be able to make him uh, walk automatically if the animator chooses to do so. So what's happening is we have, in Stabby, we have a full beach. We have a life-size beach with a human character, and Stabby is the size of a hermit crab. We need to be able to make him cover a lot of ground. So instead of having all of the animators animate his walk um, in every single frame, we figure that if we use this feature, then it may speed up the process for some of the less experienced animators. That way we just have a walk cycle that everyone can always refer to, and they can still tweak the um, IK control <coughs> on top of it. So let me go ahead and open that up, and I'll give everyone a brief preview of Stabby's rig. Um, here we go. So yeah, for those of you who don't know, here's what Stabby looks like. It's gonna be our main character. And he has quite a few controls. I'm just gonna go ahead and scale him up just to make him easier to work with. So yeah, right now, he has every control that he needs. He has a, a ribbon body, so you can stretch it out, do whatever you want with it. And he also has this cat skull control. In case you didn't notice, he has a cat skull for his shell. And the cat skull actually has a golden tooth that just textured, but you can't see it in the Maya viewport. Uh, it looks really good though. So be, be on the lookout for that. Um, he has stretchy legs and stretchy arms too. So if you turn on these, um, yeah, you switch to IK for the claws, you can see it's all stretchy. So the animator should have a lot of fun with it. He also has um, aim constrained eyes, so you can do some fun stuff with that. He will have eyelids, but yeah, right now you can just scale his eyes. Uh, yeah, there we go. And you can also rotate his eyes. So yeah, like that. And I already put some space switches on them, so you have a space switch for the eyes right here. You can always have them pointed towards the world, kind of like that. And you can also do the same thing for the head control. So for the head control, let's say you don't want to deal with the head moving while you move other parts of the body, you can just go like that. And as you can see, the skin weighting is still a work in progress. But the skin weighting is final enough to show for the auto walk. So with Stabby's auto walk right here, um, I set it up in a separate folder for now. If you want to see Stabby's auto walk, all you have to do is make sure that you're grabbing this yellow placement control right here. And you want to make sure that auto walk is turned on. So when you do that, that allows you to, as you translate the control, you can walk forwards or backwards. And you do have to be careful how much you translate the control because if you have it jump from here all the way to here in a matter of a second, it's gonna look like he's gliding just because of how fast his feet have to his feet have to move to compensate. But if you move it at a normal pace, it, it looks pretty believable. And you can also tweak stuff on top of this. So let's say you don't necessarily like how 
one of the legs are looking, you can say, oh, maybe I want this leg right here to be a bit further out. If you do that, you're basically offsetting your animation. Everything else will stay the same. So this gives you a bit of control over the auto walk. And yeah, that's about it for the preview. Now, so yeah, this file right here pretty much has the same setup where you can just slide it along the surface. You can't really see it that well because the surface isn't that. Yeah, there you go. You can kind of see it right here. So with this right here, we're just going to do a simple auto walk. And for the auto walk, you want to make sure that you have IK handles. So that's how I'm doing mine. I'm not using FK for the auto walk. It's just all IK. So what you have, if you look in the outliner, is you have a group. And then on top of that group, actually, let me just show you the final file real quick, just so you can see how the outliner should look. So yeah, you have right here your IK handle. And on top of that, you're going to have uh, a group. You're going to have a group for your step, and that's where your set driven keys are going to go. So in this case, I had two offset groups because there is a forward backward step, and then there's also a side step. So for this demo, I'll just show you how to do the forward step, but it's, it's basically the same idea. So to make things easier, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and delete these right here. Delete these. And from there, I'll walk you through the process. OK, there we go, yeah. So you want to be able to make the IK handles follow along with this control right here. In order to do that, you do have to have your group set up. And from here, you're going to go up to the general box. And you can open up set driven keys right here. You're going to want to load this master control down here as your driver. So if you've dealt with set driven keys before, you know that there's a driver and a driven. You can have one attribute drive another attribute. Um, and this is very helpful for a lot of things in rigging. Um, one thing that you do have to look out for is when you're doing a set dripping keys, um, make sure that when you go to your graph editor, make sure that the tangents are how you want them to be. So uh, for most set dripping keys, like let's say you're doing a reverse foot or something, you probably want them to be linear. For anything where you're gonna be rotating joints, you want it to be linear, but if you're doing a walk cycle like this, then you may want to mess with the tangents just to make it look more believable. Um, but if it's just something that's going to be controlling the offsets of joints, then you do want that to be linear. Um, so let's go ahead and we're going to make these groups right here, the driven. And because we're going to be translating in the Z axis, we're going to make that right there. We're going to select that as our driver. And for the driven, it's also going to be, it's going to be the Y and Z axis because you want it to raise up and you also want it to go forward. So let's first deal with the y-axis. So let's set it up so that when you push it forward, we're just going to have it mirrored for right now. So what we can do is we can actually edit our set driven keys in the graph editor, which you'll see in a few minutes. You can treat it just like um, any keyframes, because that's really all they are. Um, they're pretty much like the same keyframes you would use when you're animating. So let's go ahead and set that up real quick. So you have translate Z. And you can always go back and edit this. Let's see. Um, we're just going to go ahead and set a key right here on translate Y. And then we're going to go forward, let's say, five units. Maybe not five. <coughs> we'll say two and a half units. And then two and a half units, these values should be right here. So this is basically going to be the, the height of the walk. So this is the highest that the legs will go. <coughs> so we'll say they'll go, they'll go pretty high up, almost go up here. So let's set a set driven key right here. And now you'll see it goes like this. 
So now you're going to want this to be uh, cycled, but you're going to want to cycle it. Actually, this isn't important. For Translate Z, you are going to want to cycle with offset, but with Translate Y, because it's just going up and down, you can just cycle like normal. So right here, you want it to keep going. You want it to still go up and down. Um, actually, let's go ahead and set up Translate Z, just so you can see it. You won't have to worry about it being stuck at the origin. So now that we have Translate Y going up, let's do Translate Z. So right here, this is at two and a half. Let's make sure that when this goes to five, or let's go back to zero because we do need to set our initial key for Translate Z. See, it's not blue. When a, an attribute is blue in the channel box, that says that there's a set driven key for that attribute. Um, and sometimes, if you're not careful, you, if you set two set driven keys on the same attribute, it'll turn yellow, and it creates a, my creates a blend weight for you, which um, is not usually something I work with. You can use it to your advantage in some circumstances, but usually <coughs> I try to avoid that. I like to have just mm, I like to have full control over my set driven keys. So let's go ahead and set up translate Z right now. So this is gonna allow his feet to go forward. We can set that up at zero. And now when we pull this out, oh, I forgot. Okay, so for translate Y, we have it going up at two and a half. Let's have it go back down at five. So right here. Let's bring that back down. There we go. So now it'll go, yeah, like that. So now you want the feet to be able, they're going up and down, but you want them to be able to go forward. So let's set that up. We already set it up at zero, so let's go out to five. And we want it to be right here, right at five. So you want your translate Z on your steps to match the translate Z on your control. That way, your walk will always keep up with your body. Um, that's just the easiest way to do auto walk. Um, and that's why you put offset groups on top of your icon handle. So let's say the animator wants to change the stride length in a certain step. You put that offset group on there when you're setting up the set, dri set driven key so that when you go in the viewport and you grab the actual control, you'll see that you have a clean attributes right here for your actual IK controls. So let's go ahead and set that key real quick. And now when you look at it, you can see it's going just like that. And that's how you want it to be. You want it to be mirrored on both sides so that way you can offset it in the graph editor. So right now, let's go ahead and dive into the graph editor. So we'll go up here, go to animation, graph editor, and you can see these are your actual set driven keys right here. So you see this is your group right here. It looks like there's keys on it. It's like we set keyframes, but we didn't set keyframes. These are just, let me actually go into the node editor real quick just to show you. So you have actual set range nodes. That's what they're called right here and these set range nodes define your keys. So when you go in the outliner and you select your group, this is actually what you're selecting. So this is just to help you know what's actually going on, but you're fine if you just go up here. So right here, you see that there's three keyframes for right here, if you want to count the, yeah, so we have these distinct keyframes and the problem right now is that they're not following infinitely. They're only following where we set the keys. If you want them to follow infinitely, then you just gotta go up to, oops, let me select both of them. So yeah, we have both of them selected again. You have to go up to right here, go up to view, and you want to view with infinity. Usually this works, but I think for set driven keys, you can't actually see the infinity. Is that, yeah, um, it's weird. But if you turn it on for keyframes, you'll actually see it. For set driven keys, I'm not sure. 
you're just gonna have to imagine it but um, the important thing is that you go up to pre-infinity you want to cycle with offset go up to post infinity and also cycle with offset so what this does is it says it's, it looks at the difference between these keyframes and it says okay we need to cycle at the end but what we're gonna do is we're not gonna cycle from the same spot we're gonna cycle from the end point or we're gonna <laughs> cycle from the beginning point right here so that way it's it's going to follow the body so now if you go right here you can see look at that so now you got a little walk going on the only problem is that you don't have the legs being offset so one thing that I did forget to set up is that, and this is very important, you do want this, you want each leg to be able to stay on the ground. You don't want it to slide. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna quickly set um, some keyframes, or not keyframes, we're gonna set some keys in the graph editor. So let's look at the left side for right now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna copy these and Let's go out to here and let's fix those tangents. So right now in the graph editor right here, this is showing your translate Z on your master control basically. These are translate Z values. This isn't time since you're dealing with set driven keys. Usually when you're dealing with the graph editor, you're dealing with um, an attributes, um, translate rotation scale values over time. But here you're dealing with it over the, the Z axis of another attribute. Um, so what I did was I said that there needs to be a pause. So when the foot contacts, it needs to stay on the ground. So instead of doing that in the viewport, I just decided to do that in the graph editor because it is a bit easier now that you know what you're dealing with. Uh, so do it to both sides. And the good thing about this is that it won't affect your cycle. It'll include it in your cycle. It'll expand it. Um, so you don't have to update that. And now, what that means is that you get something kind of like this. And it doesn't look right at first, but that's because we need to offset it. So what should happen is you need to decide which leg you want to lift up first. Do you want the left leg to look, lift up first or the right leg to? Um, I will go with the left foot just because I'm left-handed. So I'll start with the left. Um, it doesn't necessarily matter which side you start with. It's just that when you're doing the auto walk, um, you do have to pick a side. Um, so you need to say, okay, which side is going to be the, the initial side, and then you can keep going. So let's go ahead and go back up into the graph editor and make sure to select our groups. So now to offset, this is really simple since we're just dealing with integers for our translate Z. <coughs> Um, you can just say the right side shouldn't move until, oh, can we do this? There we go, yeah. So all I did was I just slid it so that, yeah, now it's offset. And when translate, is that right? Let's see if that's right. Yeah, that's not right. That's too offset. So we need to make sure that right when it contacts is when the other foot should begin. So let's actually do this at two and a half, I want to say. Um, I don't think we can, we can only do whole values, so we may just have to, yeah. So if we go right here, let's look at the left and look at the right. We want this at seven and a half. And then this can be at ten and a half, and then Twelve and a half, and then this can be fifteen or no, seventeen and a half. Yeah, there we go. So <laughs> let's see if this is right. I think this may not be right, but we'll see. Let's go back to zero. Okay, yeah. So you can tell by going here, you want it to have a bit of an overlap. So right now what's happening is, yeah, we don't have it fully offset. So let's go back here. Uh, 
And one thing you can actually do is, let's go ahead and make this graph editor a bit smaller. You can go up here and actually see the values changing. There you go. So you can see it like that. I can give you a better idea of how you need to <coughs> offset your left and right foot. There we go. So that's what we're looking for right there. We want it to start from a neutral position and then go like that. So now the problem we're running into is what you'll notice is it's going too fast. The body is going too fast for the legs. So the legs are behaving how you want it to. Yeah. So what we can do is we can go back up here and we look at how fast this is going. So you have the left side right here. All we really need to do is just shrink this. So just make it go a bit faster. Um, we probably could. I'll just, since we have such few keyframes, we can just cut these in half. <coughs> but you can use the, actually, I'm not sure about this. Um, I tried to, to kind of squeeze uh, set driven keys together in the graph editor, but I don't think you can. I think it's just one of those limitations in Maya because I use the same tool, but yeah, for whatever reason you can't. So uh, unfortunately, you're gonna have to manually squeeze this in, but if you know the numbers you're dealing with, then it's not too big of an issue. So we can actually put this back at the origin. Then yeah, let's compress these. So yeah, I think we Okay, oh wait. There we go, yeah. So I accidentally moved translate y. So it needs to be at zero, and this can be at 0.25. So there, now we go. So then we can re-offset it. There we go. So now we can re-offset it, move this back up to, say, five. And actually, let me just go ahead and, just so we can see it. So now we should have a, a situation where the legs, once again, are going as they should. There we go. Yeah, so that's what you want. You want it to be like this, so that way the legs will keep up with the body. <coughs> so now all we have to do is just re-offset the left side and the right side. So like I said earlier, to get the offset, how you want it. You can just, in your viewport, see what's happening. Oh, and sorry, um, if you want to move all of your keys, whether it's keyframes or set-driven keys, you can just select all of them. And if you hold down shift over one of the tangents, you can drag it like that. So now thinking about this, what you want to happen is you don't want the, because the left leg is moving first, you don't want the right leg to move up until the left leg contacts. So the left leg is going to contact at two and a half. So what you want to happen is you want this right leg right here. Oops. Okay, yeah, so this should not be at one. It should be at 1.25. So yeah, just make sure that your left and right side are the same. And these are not. So let's fix that real quick. There we go. So you want them to be identical. And let's fix this one right here. And this also does need to be at zero. So now you can just go ahead and grab the right side and yeah, there you go. This is the right side. You can go ahead and offset that. And you are gonna want to offset it manually. So just add two and a half to everything. And once you do this, 
you should be good to go. And remember, because we did the cycle with offset, it's going to update um, before these keys and after these keys. So that way, you don't have to set set driven keys all across your um, all across your scene. You can just set these this initial cycle, and it'll offset it for you. So let's go ahead and look at our viewport real quick. And there we go. So that's what we're looking for. You want to be able to make it walk like this. You want to make it walk forwards and backwards. And you may be wondering to yourself, well, this walk cycle doesn't necessarily look how I want it to. That's why you have these offset groups. So these offset groups allow you to grab the IK control, which is point constrained to the IK handle. And uh, let me just show you what's going on real quick, just in case some of you may not know much about IK handles. Um, we went over it earlier this quarter, but essentially the IK handle <laughs> allows you to, um, you have these three joints right here. So you can think of this as like the hip joint, this is the knee joint, and this has the uh, foot joint right here, or toe, ankle. Yeah, this is more like an ankle, even though there is no foot under it, but yeah. You can think of it like that. And, and what you would normally do with FK is you would have to rotate. If you wanted to get a bit of like a, um, a bend happening like this, let's say you wanted to do this. With FK, you would have to rotate this up and then rotate this down. And it's just extra work for the animator. This is more intuitive. So usually when you're doing some type of um, arthropod um, or arachnid, any type of creature like that, most animators are going to animate it using IK just because they can pick up the feet. It's, it's a lot easier to work with. So this IK handle right here uh, is point constrained to this IK control. And they have the same world space right here. So that allows you to lift it up just like this. And it does the same thing as lifting up the actual IK handle, which you can find right here in my outliner. So it does the exact same thing. And that way it's just, it's better to have controls as opposed to actually messing with your IK handle because um, these values, as you can see, um, they're, they're not, they are pretty clean, but they're not always going to be this clean. Um, and now you have this going on. So let's say that you want a longer stride. You can offset it with this IK control. So let's say you want this to go um, a little higher, actually. Yeah, let's say you want this to be a bit higher. You can fix that without having to redo all of your set driven keys. And this does allow you to, let's say that you want it to walk on a higher surface. Um, you can always bring this back down. So it doesn't have to be. Yeah, and I did, okay, here's one thing. So I set up a limit, so I said that this shouldn't go below zero, this IK handle right here. So this allows you to create a new ground. So let's say that you want to raise up both IK handles. Let's say you want it to walk right above the ground. If you do it like that, then, yeah, there you go. Like this, then it'll walk as if, yeah, as if there's a, an imaginary ground right above it. And because I have the um, auto walk on terrain set up, it's going to look like it's being offset with the ground as well. So this can come in handy for the animators if they want to do something. So yeah, now you have your auto walk right here. And I guess I could show if you want to mess with uh, Translate Z. So let's say that you want to create a bit of a longer stride. You can just grab this IK control right here. And there you go. You kind of get a wider walk for yourself right there. And you can keyframe these uh, controls right here. So as an animator, if the animator wants to refine the walk a bit more, they can set that up. And they can actually set it up with the cycle going on. So let's say that they just, all they want to do is just tweak the auto walk. They can set it up so that it follows the same cycle with offset and they just fix the auto walk for themselves. And uh, that's about it for the auto walk. Um, if you want to learn more about how to make the geometry constraint right here, um, you can talk to me 
Um, I'm going to be here until 5. Um, I will show you real quick uh, what you can do if you do want to set this up. So right now we have a situation where um, there's a ground right here. It's a plane. It's single sided. And because you have these locators right here, these locators are geometry constraint to the plane. So a geometry, geometry constraint basically allows you to take an object and it'll constrain it to another object. So in this case, I took a locator and I said that this locator, no matter how I translate it, um, it needs to always stay level with this other object, which is the ground plane. So that's how I came up with the idea for this. Um, if any of you know Professor Steele, he was, he was the one who uh, said that I should do this. So um, he was pretty happy to see how it turned out. Um, he'll probably be excited to see it on Stabby too, but yeah, this just allows you to this allows you to edit the ground. So let's say that you want a bit of a steeper. There we go. Yeah, it's usually not this slow, but that's fine. Um, you can edit it in real time in your viewport, and this allows you to not have to worry about animating the IK controls. So the only issue I found with this is that because there is no stretchy IK on this uh, proxy rig right here, uh, it does look like in some areas it looks like he kind of uh, slides. It's like he's sliding down some of these planes. But it's not too bad. So yeah, like right here you can see it kind of looks like he's just going like that. So now if you have stretchy um, stretchiness set up on your IK handles, and the stretchiness basically allows you to either translate or scale your joints in a way where it'll match the IK handle. You want your, um, your end joint. So in this case, this would be kind of like the, the ankle joint. You always want that joint to match where your IK handle is. So you kind of want all the joints in the chain to compensate. That's how you get um, stretchiness. That's how you get those rigs where like if you stretch out the arm, it goes like all the way to infinity or stretch out the leg, it does the same thing. So I can show you um, the stabby rig and show you how that would work. But yeah, with this right here, if you had stretchiness set up on these legs, it wouldn't look like this. It wouldn't look like the, the legs get locked and go in a straight line. But this still, even this still helps the animators because they can still come in with the IK handle and they can go like this tweak it a bit and th this still gives them a lot of freedom so before I end I'm just gonna show you Stabby's rig one more time um, play around with it for a couple minutes and if you have any questions um, I'll let you ask them and I'll try my best to answer them uh, let's go ahead and open up Stabby real quick just so I can show you a bit more what I mean by stretchy IK because I know some of you may not be familiar with that uh, let's take a look real quick and let me make sure I'm recording. Am I recording? Okay, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, so we have Stabby's rig right here. Still a work in progress, but almost there. And She's taking her time. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Yeah. So you want to play around with what I have right here, I'll go ahead and show this. You have IK automatically turned on for your legs. You can also turn it on for the arms, but I've hit it for now because I still need to do skin weighting, as you can see in some areas. Um, but yeah, with this stretchy IK, this allows you, and let me actually show you the joints real quick. So you wanna see what the joints are doing? You can go up here and Let's go ahead and just for now, you don't want to see all of this. Um, you can let's go right here. There we go. Yeah. So here's your IK handles right here, and you can see they're stretching. Let me just go ahead and hide um, everything except the controls and the IK joints for now. Here you go. So what you can see is that when you translate. When you translate this control right here, or if you translate the IK control, this may be a bit easier to understand. So if you translate this IK control right here, what's happening is that 
the scale attributes on the joints or are changing in the primary axis. So right now, X is the primary axis and it's scaling down. So what that means is originally you would have your joints, they would just kind of point in that direction because they can't reach. Um, but by sh changing the scale or the translate values, you can set this up with translate values too. Um, by setting it up so that it goes either translates in the primary axis or scales in the primary axis, that allows you to always match this um, IK handle right here, which is being point constrained to the IK control. And if you want to get a bit more advanced, you can also add uh, volume preservation to your um, stretchiness, which is basically in your secondary axes, you um, want it to get thinner as your primary axis gets longer. And there's different ways you can go about doing volume preservation. Um, what I do is I normally just have an on-off switch, so this is without volume preservation. So no matter how you stretch it, it will always stay the same in its secondary axes. But if you turn it to one, then it'll be fully volume preserved, full, fully volumetrically preserved. So that way when you bring it up, it'll keep its volume. When you stretch it out, it'll distribute its volume across the entire geometry. So with that being said, um, I'll open the floor up to any questions that you may have about uh, Stabby, uh, the auto walk, um, set driven keys, um, IK handles, really anything in general. So um, any questions? Okay, well, uh, if that's it, um, thank you all for listening to my talk. Um, I hope it helped you in some way or you were uh, at the least bit uh, slightly entertained. Uh, <laughs> if you want to see more of Stabby, then uh, stick around after 4 p.m. and I'll still be here. And um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you. Woo!